Hey there, it's Kirilyn with another Kira Studios video. Recently, we've been talking about how to practice drawing some imagination. So far, we've taken a look at using center lines, cross contour lines, and how to understand cylinders and space. Now, I highly recommend before watching this video that you pause and click the two links below in the description so you can catch up on the other two. And then come on back and continue with today's lesson. Today we'll be talking about how to understand boxes in perspective. And I know it's perspective, but again, it won't be hyper technical. And I will show you how to use this understanding of boxes in space and how that will improve your imaginative drawings. Now, just because I say boxes and perspective, it doesn't mean that we will only apply this for houses and cars and mechanical inanimate objects. In fact, understanding boxes is crucial for drawing better people and for drawing animals in a more convincing way. And those are two things I love to draw and I hope it'll help you out as well. So let's get started. Just so you know, this is where we're heading with this exercise. We're gonna be drawing some animals and use boxes to draw them in a very solid way. But let's review some perspective first. All right, so when we draw boxes in perspective, we have to think about it as a game. And in this game, we are pretending like we're looking through an imaginary frame. And that frame is mirrored or reflected in the edges of our paper pad. So we're mainly interested in the edges that move away from us from the box, the receding edges. And you want to be able to figure out if your box needs to be dealt with in a one point perspective or a two point perspective. Oh my God, so how do you do this? Or what does it even mean? One point perspective box basically looks like the one on the left. It means that the plane that you're facing looks parallel to the edge of your paper pad. So both the horizontals and the verticals are parallel with your paper pad, with your imaginary frame. If, however, your box doesn't really look like that, your box looks more like the one on the right hand side that I'm drawing, notice how only the vertical lines, the vertical edges, are parallel with my imaginary frame aka my drawing pad. So notice how that results in one point that all edges converge on for the left box and two vanishing points, they're called two points where the edges visually converge on for the box on the right hand side. One point perspective is a pretty artificial way of looking at things. So for more dynamic drawings, I recommend you stick with two point perspective. Now the thing that you have to begin with is you have to figure out where your eye level is. And you can do that by closing one eye, imagine a laser beam coming out of your other eye, and wherever that laser beam is in relationship to your box, that's where your eye level is. Your eye level is your horizon line, and it's so important because those vanishing points, these ones, they have to sit on your horizon line. They may not be above or below. The second thing that you want to do is you want to begin with your verticals. Get those locked in and then figure out your receding edges. Don't begin with your receding edges. You're gonna set yourself up for trouble. And my tip for any time you feel like you're getting lost and confused, come back to your closest edge. Always know what's closest to you and let things recede away from there. So to summarize, on the left we have one point perspective, one vanishing point on the horizon line, and on the right we have two point perspective with two vanishing points on the horizon line or eye level, it's the same thing. So let's apply this information to our animal drawings. And I recommend you begin by drawing from little sculptures just like I am. The more you practice from life, the better your imaginary drawings later on will become. So I begin, of course, with a gesture. I keep it super faint, very light, just establishing the shape and the scale of the animal. But very early on, I start to decide how can I enclose this animal 
in an artificial box. And I'm making this up, of course, because animals are not boxy, they're rounded. So I have to make a choice where, if I had to make a decision, is the transition from the top plane to the front plane. And when that front plane is parallel to my imaginary picture frame, I know I need to treat this animal in one point perspective. And next, how much of the back do I see? Another thing I'll be looking for is where the feet touch the ground. They will arrange around a rectangle if the animal stays perfectly aligned. If one of the feet is shifted forward or back, it will be slightly outside of the rectangle, but you can kind of guesstimate what kind of a rectangle is described by the footprint. So that's something I definitely look at. I'm also looking at the body to leg ratio. How much body is taken up by the rectangle or how much of the rectangle is taken up by the body and how much of the rectangle is just legs because that will determine the animal characteristics. A deer has lots of legs obviously. Here I'm drawing the head right now. The head has its own box so I'm using the, the big box for torso and legs and then the head has its own little box going on. The thing for the main body box that I also use it for is keeping my joints aligned. So you see these little faint lines um, that will help me make sure that the joints don't feel like um, one is lower and one is higher. On the head I use, um, it's more like a wedge, but it's basically a, a tapering box. I use it to make my eyes feel like they're arranged um, symmetrically, the ears arranged symmetrically, and even the antlers. So let's turn this into a two-point perspective exercise by looking at the pig. I ask myself first, what's closest to me? On the deer, I had this whole side plane that was closest to me. With the pig, it's that back edge where that back leg is, right? So I'm clarifying to myself, how many planes do I see and how much of each? So I'm seeing the top, I'm seeing a lot of the left, and I'm seeing quite a bit of the right side as well. But I begin with that closest edge to me. Once I have that, I do my best. Again, it's artificial. I'm just making a call on that. Where is that transition from the top to side plane? How much is taken up by the body? how much is taken up by the legs. And look at the difference from pig to deer. The pig's body, the pig's torso is taking up so much more space. I'm using the box to arrange my ankles like I'm doing right there, making sure they feel like they are symmetrical with the rest of the body. And for the rest of the pig, it's basically really short cylinders and a sphere because the pig's head isn't quite as blocky as the deer's head. But again, look at how do the feet touch the ground? What kind of a rectangle do they arrange on? And how does that rectangle recede into space? And is that being carried through by the joints on the legs as well? So I said ankles earlier, but I meant joints. So let's look at what happens if we don't look at how we can fit an animal inside of a box. So here I'm drawing just a bad version of the deer where I do not arrange the footprint along or within a rectangle and I don't even think about the transitions from top to side body. And so notice how the body itself looks very flat and the same is true for the legs. They're doing this weird thing where the back leg looks closer to us than the front leg. So those are all no-nos and that's what we're doing with the boxes. That's what we're trying to avoid. So last drawing, um, same pig I think, just in a different vantage point. Um, what I wanted to show here is how you can use the box to reinforce the alignment of any of your joints. So you see where I'm putting the red dots? So I'm making sure that those angles stay aligned with the edge of the box that I have determined for this animal. And just a clue, if you don't really know where to make that transition from top to side, look for shadow edges or highlight 
um, they will often be little telltales of where to make that box transition. And just to take the pressure off of you, there's not a 100% right answer for where you put your box edges. You just make the best guess where the top becomes the back or the top becomes the side. Okay, so a little extra lesson. Notice how when you have a pig going in space or like a dog, um, you're basically stacking a bunch of spherical forms in front of each other. And by being clear how they overlap each other, you create a lot of spatial depth. So that will something we'll be talking about more in the next video. So I hope you come back for that and I'll talk to you soon.